All right, today I'm going to color grade DJI Action 6 D Log M footage in DaVinci Resolve. However, before I start, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by me because I am going to use my power grade to color grade the shot from today. This power grade is only $10. It works with pretty much any camera out there. It's relatively easy to use and delivers fantastic results at the same time. But it will only work with the studio version of Resolve because it is based on film look creator if you are interested i'm going to leave a link for it down below with that said let's start so first of all let me show you my project settings i'm using davinci white gamut intermediate and rec 09 scene that's because recently blackmagic released an update with this new setting in here viewers match quicktime player when using rec 09 scene which means basically whatever you see in here in the preview window is going to match everything you will see after exporting your video in quicktime if you're using a mac because in the past there was an issue with color shift and whatnot and Blackmagic released this to fix this as much as possible so you get the same colors you get in here in this preview window in quick time after exporting your video basically all right now let me apply my power grade i'm gonna go in here roma power grade and let's start with the basics idt and odt idt is input device transform and odt is output device transform and with the idt you are basically going to convert the log color space of your camera to davinci with gamut intermediate with this color space transform tool but because d log m is not really available in here i am going to use a different tool to do that so let me delete this i'm going to apply a dctl and then I'm going to select DJI Action 5 D Log M to DaVinci with Gamut Intermediate. I know this is Action 5, not Action 6, but Action 6 is not available at the moment. And this is close enough. And this is DL basically converts D Log M to DaVinci with Gamut Intermediate. It is completely free. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. And it is also included with my power grade now for the ODT or DRT I'm using a custom DCTL as well from JP2499 to convert DaVinci with Gamut Intermediate to Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4 and it is also free link is down below it is also included with my power grade and the reason I'm using this and not the color space transform tool is because it delivers significantly better results in my personal opinion but first of all I am going to remove this noise reduction node in here because I don't really need to clean up any noise in the shot but if you do you can enable this and it will do something for you but you can also go in here to the motion effects uh, panel and adjust the slider in here and also in here to adjust basically how much noise reduction you want to apply but i am going to delete this also i'm going to delete the grain node because i am not going to apply any grain but here is a before and after of what it does before after before after and also i'm going to disable the highlights node for now and later on i will turn it on and explain to you exactly what it does all right first of all i'm going to start with film creator basically apply a look and then work underneath the look to keep it as efficient as possible if you will so let me open up film creator and i've already adjusted some settings in here for you to have a good starting point here is a before and after before and after a very minor look adjustment and also you can adjust you know the intensity in here in the color blend and also you can select a different look with the core look window in here like maybe you want cinematic akasaka elated or vintage i am gonna go for the cinematic one i think it looks the best in here and then maybe i'm going to adjust the intensity slightly to something like so and play around with the core look i'm happy with this here is a before and after before and after All right next i am going to play around with the contrast in here and this is basically like a filmic contrast curve first of all i am going to link all of these channels in here and i've also anchored the middle gray point for you do not touch this point because it's going to basically keep a middle gray as neutral as possible for you and that's basically what you want and if you want to increase contrast you can you know bring this curve higher in here for the highlights and then decrease the curve in here for the shadows if you will but i think i'm going to leave it more or less as is but slightly compress the highlights in here because the highlights in here are relatively strong something like this maybe here is the before and after before and after maybe actually with the shadows i'm going to slightly bring it up it's a bit too dark something like so 
here is a before and after before and after maybe actually i'll bring it down a little bit All right next i am going to apply my split tone color scheme in here with the split tone split curve node in here and again it's also using the curve and i know it looks a bit uh, complex but it's actually relatively simple so in here you have the shadows which i've neutralized to keep the blackest blacks as black as possible if you will and then i've also cleaned up the highlights to keep the whites as clean as possible and i've also cleaned up the middle gray to keep the middle gray as clean as possible and then i basically pushed in some cold colors into the shadows and warm colors into the highlights so let me just readjust this a little bit first of all i am going to unlink this chain to change the channels individually so i'm going to bring in a bit more teal by reducing red then I'm going to balance it out with the green and I highly recommend to keep these points as parallel to each other as possible. Then maybe with the blue point, let me see if I can do something. I'm going to actually reduce slightly a bit of the blue. Okay. And then with the highlights, I'm, ba I'm basically going to bring in some warm colors to have like a split tone effect from cold and warm, basically. And then if you want to affect more of the mid-tones, you can go with the point closer to middle gray but if you want to affect uh, more of the whites you can go higher and here as you can see it is now less intense i'm gonna go somewhere in between about here i would say just reduce blue to bring in yellow and then i am going to add a bit of red to bring in some warmth and then i'm going to also add in some green to make the yellow a bit more golden if you will something like so more or less let me close this and here is a before and after before and after personally i think it's a bit too strong so i am gonna go in here to the key window and play around with the game by default i've set it for you to 0.5 but i think i'm going to reduce it even more to somewhere around here 0.275 let's do a before and after before and after i think it looks fantastic and with this node in here with the split flc it's going to do the same thing as the split curve but it's going to use the split tone uh, effect from da vinci resolve here you basically can you know inject any color you want to the shadows and then also to the highlights and then pivot how much of one color is going to go towards the shadows or highlights and also here you can play with the global blend of the effect but i would highly recommend using the split curve node because it is more versatile and also it's more clean because you can anchor the whites the middle gray and the blacks but it does look a bit more complex if you will then split flc if you are in a hurry or you're lazy you can use the split flc node it's going to work just fine all right final thing i'm going to do for the look is apply this bb node which stands for bleach bypass and again i'm just using the film creator effect with the bleach bypass set to 0.15 and if you want to make it stronger you can just go to the right and it's going to basically increase the contrast and at the same time make the image more black and white which in this case i kind of like so i'm going to set it to somewhere around here let's do like 0.325 something like so and here is a before and after before and after right now let's do some basic color adjustments like exposure white balance and saturation and then also play around with windows and whatnot so first of all i think this shot is a bit too bright so i'm gonna go in here to this exposure node use the hdr wheels and just reduce the exposure a bit I would say something like this. Now with the white balance, I think I'm okay, but if you want to adjust the white balance, you can go to the color reason here and use only the gain wheel basically to adjust the white balance, right? You can inject any color you want basically, and it's going to give you the most photometric results. I think actually maybe I'm going to bring in some warmth to the shot in red because it was a bit too cold. Here is a before and after, before and after, just a slight adjustment, if you will. And then with the saturation, I'm using subtractive saturation in here. And you can play around with this with the gamma and gain sliders, gain wheels, if you will. So usually what I do is I increase the, you know, the intensity of the gamma wheel to about here, I would say. And then I balance everything out by reducing, pushing the gain wheel basically to the left, like so. And here is a before and after, before and after. All right, with this node in here, I basically 
qualified the skin more or less with the qualifier in here and if you need to readjust this you can play around with these sliders in here it is not perfect but it's not supposed to be perfect and basically what it does is it softens the skin tones a little bit here is before and after before and after and i'm only using this effect in here for that the mid-tone detail if you want to make the skin tones more soft you can go to the left to make them look kind of dreamy if you want to make them more sharp which i personally do not like you can go to the right usually i set them somewhere between my minus 10 to minus 25 and in this case i'm gonna set it to about here i would say minus 15 works just fine before after before after right next in here is where i play around with specific hues in the frame and i would highly recommend to use the color warper tool in davinci resolve because it is by far the most accurate one and also the easiest one to use so for example the blues in here are a bit too teal and at the same time they are a bit too saturated at least for me so i'm just going to hold on this color desaturate the blue as you can see with my mouse and then just push it towards blue like so here is a before and after before and after it was really easy and super quick and awesome it does not break apart the image. I'm going to add another node like this for that, for the hue, so just a different color. And I personally want a bit more saturation in the yellows in here. So I'm just going to grab a point in here in the warm colors and saturate it a bit more. Go extreme, then I'm gonna go to the reds a bit and then bring it back in terms of like saturation. Maybe a bit more to the yellow, something like so. Here is a before and after before and after looks beautiful easy to use and it's also very accurate all right now below this hue node i have a skin hue node and again i've just qualified roughly the skin tones with the qualifier in here and if you need to adjust skin tones in your shot you can just again go to the color warper highlight the skin and either desaturate saturate and the skin you know or you can change the hue and for this example i am going to Push it slightly towards red, if you will. Let me open the vector scope and just select the qualifier, see where I'm at. It's pretty accurate to my eyes. Maybe slightly bring back the yellows. Here's a before and after, before and after. Let's see again, before and after, before and after. All right, now remember this highlights node where I said I'm going to disable it in the beginning of the video. Well, what this node does is basically it preserves the highlights, if you will, to artificially make the dynamic range of the shot a bit wider. And all I'm doing in here is I basically qualified only the brightest parts of the frame. It's set to 62 with the low in here, but if you want to, you know, make it only the brightest brights, if you will, you can go a bit more to the right with this slider, but, or if you want to include more of the mid-tones, you can go to the left. I'm going to set it to 62. And then all I'm using in here to bring down the highlights is the highlights slider in the color wheels. It, it works really well in my personal uh, opinion. And it also makes the shot look, a look significantly better at the same time. Usually I go somewhere between minus 10 to minus 30, depending how much is necessary. For this case, I would go like minus 20 because I still want to keep the brights in here somewhat bright because I am backlighting myself in here. So I want to make it look somewhat natural. But at the same time, it is a before and after, before and after. I want to slightly compress it to make it look, you know, like the shot has significantly wider dynamic range. But here is usually where I add uh, windows to the shot. And by default, I have a vignetting node with like a circular power window, as you can see. And then I've set the gamma in the color wheels to minus four, just to reduce the exposure in the corners of the frame. And I kind of like it with this shot, but not as intense, something like this. Then with this isolator node, you can isolate specific areas in the frame. Like for example, let's say I want to isolate myself a bit more from the background. I can make it slightly bigger, go to the gamma wheel in here, and then, you know, darken the image basically. But I'm not really going to do it that much, maybe just a little bit. All right, something like so. Here is a before and after, before and after. Very minor change, if you will. Then with these two nodes in here, you can, it's just spare nodes for extra windows if necessary, or if you want to invert one of these nodes. For example, if I want to add more exposure only on myself, I can take this isolator node, take this blue line uh, with a square on the isolator node and route it to this uh, triangle in here 
right? And then I'm gonna click on this node, go to the key window and basically invert the window. And now everything I'm going to apply to this node in here is going to only affect myself. For example, if I'm gonna change the color, it's only gonna change it on myself. Or if I wanna, you know, increase the exposure on me a little bit, I can also do so in here. And I am actually going to do that. But I'm gonna come back to the isolator node and increase the feathering in here to about 50, just to make the transition a bit more gradual, if you will. All right, and then with the stream node, I usually balance everything I've done in here if necessary. For example, I feel like this image is a bit too warm. So I'm gonna go to the stream node, go to the color wheels and use the temperature slider in here and slightly decrease the warmth, if you will, to something like this. Global adjustments only, not micro adjustments. Micro adjustments are done in here with colors and whatnot, and then windows I do in here. And this is like a global adjustment to whatever I've done in this place in here. And here is a before and after, before and after. And then with this density node, I basically just added a bit of density with the color slice uh, slider in here, density slider. You can go to the left if you want to make them, make the colors less dense or go to the right if you want to make them more dense. I'm going to keep it at 0.04, something like this. Here's a before and after, before and after. Let me just open the waveform, make sure I'm all correct with the exposure in here with the blacks. Everything looks fine to me. And honestly, I think I'm kind of done, except for maybe I can play with this texture node, which basically I use to soften skin tones even more. I basically set the rough and coarse sliders in here to minus 0.1. And if I'm going to zoom in and do like a before, and after, before and after, as you can see, it makes the shot a bit softer and organic, if you will. But if you wanna make it sharper, you can go to the right with these sliders, right? Do something like so. I usually use this effect only to soften something in the shot if necessary. And kind of in this case, I will leave this to make the vibe of this shot a bit more dreamy, if you will. But make sure to disable this node until you actually export the video. Because if I'm going to try to play back the shot while having this effect on, you will see that my system cannot really play this because it's really CPU and GPU intensive. So I would highly recommend to disable this until you actually export the video. And finally, with this node in here, you can use it to clean up the highlights and shadows if necessary. So let me show you exact, exactly what it does. I'm gonna go to the curves, go to the Luma versus saturation curve, and in here I've set the shadows to 75% saturation, and then the highlights also to 75%, and the mittens I've set to 1.05. I'm going to zoom in and just look at my leg in here, and I'm going to do a before and after, before and after, as you can see, it cleans up the saturation in the shadows a little bit. And same thing goes for the highlights. Just look in here. Here's a before and after, before and after. Let me make it a bit more aggressive. Now you can definitely see the difference. This is full intensity, 200%. This is 0%. There is a significant difference. I'm going to set it to like 0 0.8, I would say. And then let me just go again to the shadows and put it down, as you can see, it's almost black and white. Bring it up, there's more color in the shadows. So use this to like clean up shadows or highlights. And then if you want to bring back some saturation, you can use this mitone slider to only saturate basically the mitons, which are going to be the most dominating, uh, going to be the most dominating area in terms of like exposure in your frame. So let me just increase this to something like so. And here is the before and after, before and after. All right, so hopefully you found this video to be informative and useful. Hopefully my power grade will help you to color grade your shots. And like I said, this will work with any camera. You will just need to change the color space in the IT node to the camera you're going to use. And then you can use the effects as I've shown you throughout this video. And yeah, check out the link down below for this power grade if you are interested. Let me know down below as well if you have any video ideas for me to make, if you will. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.